Hey everybody, I am doing another video installment of Whole House Design and this is actually our segment four. If you've been following along in the decorating section, uh, the first one had a video, two and three are articles and four we're going to have a video and article but I wanted to kind of move you forward here in this Whole House Design, what's been happening here. Um, we start, I'm starting out in kind of the entry dining living area, talked already about the blue color and all and I think I may have already shown you a swatch of this striped fabric. This is the fabric I'm going to use for the drapery. And yes, I've had it a while. I need to get busy. I know, you don't have to tell me. But I'm going to do several layers here. I have a lining and I have an inner lining that is almost like a felt that's going to give it some richness and thickness. Um, I'm going to put panels just on, this, we're in the dining room here, on either side. And because this has a little Palladian window, window at the top, I'm only going just above the shade here with a small rod on each side. They will be stationary panels and I have a little drawing here of what I'm thinking. I'm going to do something kind of floofy poofy at the top. Basically I'm going to do a rod pocket. I'm going to make, you know how usually you do like little two and a half inch ruffle or whatever? My ruffle is going to be like 18 inches and I'm going to let it fall over and I'm going to poof it up and I may have to fill it a little bit although I have some um, interfacing to maybe make it stiffer and then I'm just going to have it straight and maybe just kind of tickle the floor. I don't want it to have it pooled down there because it just gets messy and the cats lay in it so let's not do that. So that's the plan. Two panels here and two panels in the living room as well. Let's step over there. I want to talk to you about the chairs. Okay, Those of you that have been reading along know that I have these two chairs look just like this. I have this cream one and a dark blue one. Too bad they aren't exactly the same because they would look great in here and I've been messing around with do I keep the blue and the cream or what do I do and then I went out and got some fabrics trying to find something that might you know fit with some of the blues and creams and things that I have going on in here. However anyone who knows anything about upholstering knows that a chair with button tufting like this and let's see if I can get this turned a little bit this actually has like a separate, you know, semi-attached cushion here for the back. That makes it difficult. A lot of piping. This has a real pretty skirt on it. I mean, when you start getting detail like this and you want to reupholster, it's going to take eight, nine, ten yards of fabric. And of course, there's the ottoman as well. The fabrics that I pulled out that start to match, you know what a decorator upholstery fabric is like. They're anywhere from... I don't know, $18.99 to $39.99, even higher per yard. Because of that, I may just find places to put these two, and it may be less expensive to actually get two new chairs that match, that work with the colors. Um, I'm going to start doing some research on that, and I'll take some photos of things and, and let you see that as we go. While I was sitting here, it dawned on me one thing about the drapery in the living room. I have a real weird corner. Up in the corner here, part of this fireplace wall comes in. It's going to be very difficult for me to attach my um, little rod. So it's going to determine how high the drapery is because I have a little spot, you'll see, where that rod is going to fit. So little architectural details like that can be a real problem. <laughs> All right, let's move over to the transition area. Okay, here's the transition area. You're coming from the blue, we're heading towards the kitchen and family room, and there's this kind of little middle area. Really nice, places to store things for the dining room, etc. But the blue color does not look good in here with the cabinetry. Um, I've already tried painting it once and painted it back to the cream again because I did not like it at all. Maybe even if I hold it down here, you can see it just doesn't do anything for the pretty warm cabinets. So let's talk about what's happening behind me here. These two colors come this way. There's the kitchen. This goes out to the garage. And I have my um, orange toned wall here that if you've been reading along, you've seen that. I have my orange toned wall. Now, these are the colors you're going to see in the family room. I have a lot of brown, have the orangey tones like you see here, and also there's a little bit of red, so very, very warm. The walls in the family room are a cream tone, and then I'm using this East Lake Gold, it's called, as kind of a, an accent color. 
but the blue does not butt up nicely to this, so I need something for the transition. My thinking is, go dark. Go ahead and do something beautiful in the brown tones. It'll look fabulous with the blue, and then it looks great with the warm tones as well. Not to mention, um, my cabinets have kind of a chocolate glaze on them. I don't know if you can see that in the little grooves and all, but I think then the cocoa, dark brown up against this, is really going to make the cabinet stand out beautifully. And this is really, like I said, a transition area. So you're not spending a lot of time in the dark space, you're just traveling through it to a whole other um, area of color and a place to just enjoy family and friends. Let's take a look at another thing in the family room that's real quick. Do you remember that here in the family room, this was a big open space? Because I was using this uh, drop table in my office, actually as my desk. Well, now that I have the new office furniture, which you'll get a chance to see one of these days, um, I was able to bring this out here and fill in this huge gap. I have a lamp back here, you know, a vase, a couple of little items that change periodically to keep it interesting. And now this whole area ties nicely into the piece of artwork that is there. So. Yay, we got that far. And then at the same time, I'm working in here on these windows that are just so bright and so bare. They do have a lovely shade in them, but I still want fabric. And you see I have my little fabric swatch taped up here. This has the golds, the reds. I like the little check pattern. I'm trying to decide what to do with it and if this is what's going to work. Let's move on. That's right, it's the same fabric. This is the opposite end of the family room that weaves on kind of into the kitchen here. Um, the pleated shade was here in the slider when I moved in. And so I've been trying to match this for the rest of the windows in the kitchen because the sun comes in here just terribly as it sets in the west. So I found some that are pretty darn close in color, but you can see when you put it in a bay window like this, you're going to have that space in between the shades because the head rails have to butt up at the top and they're on that angle. The only way to fix that is to overlap, like put the front, uh, the center shade up front or behind the others, but I'm happy with that because actually it's up most of the time. Then I need to worry about maybe using that fabric as toppers here. Um, I ordered a blind for in here, but it came a little bit too big, so you can see the mounting hardware is in, but the blind is on its way. Again, this is a great place for some fabric as well to cut down on the echoing, the noise that's in the kitchen. And I have very little wall space in here. Most of my wall is tile, as you can see, and so the wall space is mainly just above the cabinets. Now I'm thinking because of the transition area, which is over here in that dark brown, it would be lovely to do a dark back background wall covering in here and really let those cabinets continue to stand out. I mean the family room is very open here and light so the little bit of dark at the top I think would be nice so I'm starting my search for dark background wall coverings. So if you want to see how things progress um, just keep watching the website. We'll do some articles now we'll catch a video again later. So this is number four. Take a look for more photos.